Now, apparently, uh, there has been a slew of videos against yours truly on one particular topic, which I find interesting. And that's eternal security. That's been very much attacked against. So I've given thorough teachings on this. But what I'm going to try to do in this video is go to their mindset. So before people get deceived and then they type down my name and see my videos and then some heretic just tries to debunk me in a lame way. And me, I, you know, I, I could care less, you know, so I don't really address them. I only address things that I deem to be necessary. But... Uh, those videos where they say, you know, Gene Kim's a heretic because he thinks that a person can sin, commit murder, and a person can even lose their belief in Jesus Christ and they still go to heaven. So that's like a shock tactic to yeah. people. Yeah. So they give a shocking statement to make it like, to make it persuasive to a person, make them think like, oh yeah, that is shocking. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is believable. Yeah, he is a heretic. And it, it's not scripture. They might use scripture, but then they use it in the wrong manner. So what I'm going to do is this, is I'm going to go to their mindset and explain to you that once saved, always saved is true. No matter what they say or what they teach, and they're going to all post videos again after this, but I could care less. So the thing is, is that this is to people who are seeking truth, not for people who get swayed by shock tactics. So the thing is, is that once saved, always saved, is a true doctrine from the Lord God. Why? Because salvation is by nothing of what we do. Amen. Now, do you believe, let's, let me give a common sense question. Do you believe that you are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and it is nothing of yourself? Amen. Do you honestly believe that? Yes, yes. Do you honestly, do you really believe that? then how can anything you do uh, prevent you from getting saved? Anything you do puts you to hell. I mean, it's not. Uh, you, okay, uh, the thing is this. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says what? Not of what? Work. Not of work. So no matter what you do, so let's say that you lose your belief in Jesus Christ later on. Let's say that you lose your belief in Jesus Christ or you committed the sin of murder or you committed something really bad or let's even say that after you got saved that you just been uh, uh, you just constantly kept sinning then are we to say that you're going to hell you're not truly saved by faith no it's nothing of what you do all right now let me explain it in this manner first of all let's go to 1 John 5:13 the Bible says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Did you believe? Yes, sir. That ye may what? No. Okay, you know that ye have what kind of life? Eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. That verse is a very famous verse on eternal security that should be memorized. 1 John 5, 13. But it has been the most attacked. What are their tactics? Well, they think that what you do will put you to hell. So here's the idea. If you truly believe not of works, this might kind of help a little bit. One is this. Do you know what works is? It's truly by nothing what you do, whether it be good or bad. Do you understand that? Whether it be good or bad, works has nothing to do with your salvation. Now, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Works is simply this, anything you do. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 12. Now, I know your other hand's at Romans 2. We're going to go back there, all right? But go to Ecclesiastes 12 and then Ephesians 2. Now, let me make this plain. They do not understand Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. You know, that verse, let me just read it while you're turning there. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. They do not understand what that means. 
oh, committing the sin of murder, you go to hell. If you keep living in sin, you're not really saved, and blah, 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 blah. Well, look, let's start off with Ecclesiastes 12. Now, the thing is this, is that if it says not of works, that means including the bad things you do in this life. Murder, or sinning, or whatever you do, it has no effect. Now, let me prove this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and the last verses are actually the best verses probably Solomon has ever written. The last verses for God's work, right? Is that what it said? Yeah. Every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be what? Good or whether it be what? Evil. Do you believe what God says? Every single work. Every single bad work you do. God's going to give account at the judgment? Yes. Okay, so this includes any bad work you do. Now look what happens at salvation, though. Okay? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So God will bring all these works into judgment. But what happens with the saved Christian is that those works are un. Those works are unaccounted for when God judges them with hell fire for salvation. That's out of the picture at the judgment. The Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that what? Not of yourselves. See, nothing you do, nothing you do. It is the gift of God, not of what? Works. See, so, do you get it now? So, look, I really mean what you say. Well, uh, it, excludes, uh, the, it excludes when a person first believed in Jesus, but later did not believe in Jesus anymore. Well, Ecclesiastes 12 says what? Every, every work. And then Ephesians 2 combined that says not of works. So every single bad work or good work, it's out of the picture. Do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> now, go to Romans 2. This is why they think it's shocking. The shocking thing to them is this, is that, well, then you're saying, so then they'll use a very extreme example of a pedophile, rapist, or a mass murderer, etc. You're saying that this guy who says, well, I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected, so then I can go to heaven. I cannot, I mean, that's too hard to swallow. So this is what you can do, all right, which might shock them, and they're not using their heads. We agree. What? But you just, you just contradicted yourself. No, here's the idea, okay? Go to Romans chapter 2. There's a thing that they do not understand. We believe in a doctrine called repentance. Now, whenever I use this doctrine of repentance, it seems to solve the problem with Muslims and Catholics who have a very big issue with OSAS. So uh, whenever you use the doctrine of repentance, it pretty much solves everything here. So look at Romans chapter 2. We believe that concerning your sinful condition, that you should be under conviction over that. That there should be a mindset, a change of mind, where from your sinful nature, it turns to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, what does he do? He gets rid of the old man by putting a new man inside you. And this is all within a spiritual context. Spiritually, the uncleanness where the old nature affects you spiritually is gone. It's eliminated. He puts a new nature. Now, the, that's a totally different doctrine now. The outward shell of the old man is a different story, but I'm not going to get there. I just got to make things simple. Go to Romans 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to what? Repentance. What is this repentance? The opposite of it is verse 5. But after thy what? If they don't repent, this is their nature that God hates, that damns them. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So if that guy says, yeah, I just want to commit pedophilia and just rape and commit a bunch of murder and I believe in Jesus Christ, God's going to reject that. There has to be a repentant heart that this is wrong, this is sinful. I want Jesus Christ to get rid of it by what? Putting a new nature inside me. Right. Now, here's the thing over here, okay? But you just contradicted yourself. No, I did not contradict myself. Here's the idea here. 
How this works is when you have a repentance, what can, what can you do with your sinful nature? Not of works. Nothing you can do about it. You can't stop your pedophilia. You can't stop your murder and all that kind of stuff. You know why? Because all our righteousness are filthy rags. And guess what? You might fall back to the same temptation. So if your salvation betted on that, you're in trouble, man. So with this repentance, go to 2 Corinthians 7, 9, 7, 10, 2 Corinthians 7, 10. Repentance, it leads you to salvation. With this repentance, there's nothing you can do about it. With repentance, all you can do is, God, there's nothing I can do about it, but there's something you can do about it. It leads to belief. So you put your faith. On Calvary, Jesus Christ died, buried, and resurrected, praise God. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, there's nothing that you can do about it, but just put your faith on him. Amen. And through Jesus Christ, man, man, didn't he change your life and turn your life around? That's the blessing. So yeah, we, don't, uh, we believe in repentance strongly. We're not all about that. Uh, oh yeah, I can commit murder, sin, and stuff like that, and I just believe in Jesus, and I get a, a quick way card. No, we 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 don't. We're not those kind of people. The, the beauty of salvation, belief, and faith alone in Jesus Christ is where He puts a new man inside you. Old things pass away; behold, all things are become new. Where you still struggle with the same sins, or even commit worse sins. Yes, that's possible. All right. You know why? Because the reason why is because Jesus didn't change your flesh. He only changed your spiritual nature inside you. So it's a contradiction. So what happens is you can either grow the spiritual nature more or you can grow your fleshly nature more. But it doesn't change the fact the Lord Jesus Christ puts something inside you. And what happens after that too is that you're not relying on yourself. It's Jesus Christ where you're depending upon for your salvation. All right, now here's the idea. So 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, the Bible says, uh, let me read it right over here. It's a verse that uh, we all memorize for godly sorrow. The Bible says, worketh repentance unto sal to salvation. See, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Look at that. This is not repented of. Did you notice that? When you believe in Jesus Christ for your salvation, it's not something to be repented of again. It's a one-time thing. So it's a one-time thing where you realize you're a wicked sinner. And no, we're not condoning all these sins. You have to have a repentant mind. But guess what? Let's be honest. No matter how, uh, no matter how much work and effort you try to do to clean up your sin, it's going to be nothing. Amen. So all you can do is just believe on Jesus Christ to save you. And Amen. save you he will and he shall. Amen. He did. So that's the idea. So he what about all these sins that I do in my life? Murder, adultery, and all that. Won't that affect my salvation? No. The reason why is because look at the book of Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2. No matter what sin you do in your body, it has no effect on your soul. Because God cut off your body of sins from the real you. Who's the real you that dies? Is it you in the grave or you in heaven or in hell? The you that's in heaven or in hell, right? So who's that? That's the soul. What did God do with the real you? Separated the real you from your body of sins. So your soul is cut off from your body of sins. Look at Colossians 2.11. In whom also ye, right, are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, unless you're more, your flesh is more powerful than God, the, with the exception of murder, with the exception of not believing in Jesus anymore, etc., etc., unless these sins in your body are more powerful than God's circumcision, then congrats to you. Hats off. I'm a heretic. Now, see over here, God is more powerful than you. Won't he seal you all the way to the day of redemption? Now, let me give some honorary mentions, which is so powerful that we won't turn to for time's sake. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14, as well as 430, shows you no matter how much you grieve the Holy Spirit nature inside you with your sin, you're sealed all the way to the rapture. 
cannot be undone. It's sealed. It's shut. Another one is, let's look at the book of, we have to turn over here. Let's look at 2 Timothy. So we'll have to turn here, and then we'll close this lesson. We're going to look at the book of 2 Timothy. Notice that if a person uh, no longer uh, believes, God cannot deny himself. Why? Because when God is inside you, this Holy Spirit's inside you with that new nature, you, your flesh might deny it, not believe it all it wants to, but it cannot deny God inside you. God cannot deny himself. He has to take you to heaven. Amen. Look at this one, verse 13, 2 Timothy 2.13. If we believe not, yet what? He abideth faithful. Why? He cannot deny himself. A lot of people love verse 12, all right? Deny him, he'll deny us. But then they forget verse 13. If you don't believe, then... So this does not make sense then. Does it make sense that if you deny him, he'll deny you, but if you don't believe him, that he'll, uh, he'll accept you? There's a contradiction here. So what is verse 12 talking about? They don't read the first part of verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also what? Reign, Reign with him if we deny him. Colin, explaining if we deny him, he also will deny us. Here's the idea. You deny him during your suffering, because a lot of us don't suffer as much as we should for him, then what? He's going to deny you of your reign, right. reigning with him. You're going to go to heaven with Jesus Christ no matter what you do, but guess what? God has a reward system for his children. So that's why we're living our best for him, because we want to be rewarded by God. Otherwise, we'll be denied of our reign. A lot of people uh, don't read the Bible. So uh, then they're going to pull up all these other verses. Well, Kim might pull up all these verses, but what are you going to do with Matthew 25? He might pull up 1 John 5, 13, but what are you going to do with 1 John chapter 2 and 1 John chapter 3? What are you going to do with... The simple answer to that is this. That's why they hate this doctrine. They hate this doctrine so much. We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people in the right time period. Because if you don't divide the verses and you combine them all together, you will have a heresy of a messed up wrong doctrine. Which includes those people that Gene Kim's a heretic for his OSAS teaching. That's the kind of doc messed up doctrine you get. Look at our... So please watch our video called Amazing Dispensational Truth Amen. from Genesis to Revelation, and it has changed too many people's Thank lives. Lord. I hope it will change yours. Those verses that they pull up are not applied to you. Amen. Those verses are either applied to the Old Testament time period or to the tribulation time period or to the millennium. It's not applied to you Christians in the church age. Amen. And if you think all God says everything and applies to everybody, then I would like for you to apply this verse to yourself. Uh -oh. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Does that apply to you? Yeah. 